VLAN ACLs. Now VLAN ACLs is LO, is an ACL which we are going to apply for the traffic which is which is moving between the VLANs or within the VLAN. Now generally it's a one kind of ACL where, which is going to be applied on the VLAN interface on our layer 3 switches. Let us see what are the different types of scenarios or where we can use the VLAN ACLs. You can configure VLAN ACLs to apply to all the packets that are routed in or out of the VLAN. Let's say you are trying to send the traffic from VLAN 10 to VLAN 20 and I want to ensure that when the traffic is going from VLAN 10 to 20 going through your layer 3 switch, I want only some specific traffic to go. Let me take one scenario here to explain that. Now take an example here, I got a scenario where I want to ensure that there are two different VLANs and I'm using my 3550 switch which is my layer 3 switch and by default I have SVIs created here. SVI for VLAN 10, let's say uh, 192.168.1.100, SVI for VLAN 20, uh, 2.200 or 2.100, something like this. So when you do inter-VLAN routing using SVIs automatically, all the traffic between the VLANs will be routed and they will automatically will be able to communicate. But let's say if I'm doing it inter-VLAN routing using a router, now what I can do is I can simply say uh, if I have two VLANs, VLAN 10 communicate with VLAN 20, they should go via router because they are different networks. Now when they go to router, on the router I'm going to apply ACL and that ACL is going to define what traffic will be permitted on this interface and what traffic will not be permitted on that interface. But when we are doing inter VLAN routing using SVI interfaces, uh, we don't have that uh, possibility here. So probably uh, we need to apply. So what I can do is I can use something called VLAN ACLs where I can define what traffic should enter or leave the VLANs by using VLAN ACLs. Let's take an example. Let's say uh, by default all one dot network belonging to VLAN 10 will be automatically will be able to communicate VLAN 20. But I have a requirement that I want to deny the users 1.1 and deny the users of 1.2 should not be able should not access the VLAN 20 information. So what I can do is I can go to the switch and I can I can match these two networks. What are the two networks I deny? I can match those two networks or I can write an ACL just like we do in a normal ACLs. I have to match those two networks using an ACL and then I can simply say I can simply create a VLAN access map uh, more like a route map I can match these two networks and I can simply say action drop so when I say action drop it is going to automatically drop the traffic whatever we are matching and then we can uh, we can just permit all the remaining traffic now when, when we define this ACL the good thing about the VLAN ACL is it is not only going to match your layer 3 packets we can even match your layer 2 information like we can even create a MAC ACL where we can specifically define the MAC addresses and we can even match the specific MAC addresses and we can drop that. So this entire thing is going to be done on the hardware. So that is how it works. So this is one scenario where VLAN ACL is more applicable when you want to filter the traffic moving in between the VLANs. But even you can use VLAN ACLs to filter the traffic within the same VLAN. Let's take an example. I got one more scenario where I have two users, 192.168.1.1 and 192.168.1.2. They both are on different switches. Probably I have a switch. This port belongs to VLAN 10 and the destination also belongs to VLAN 10. And in between I have a trunk link. Everything is working fine. So both are able to communicate. But let's say you may want some specific traffic let's say from 1.1 to 1.2 in between these two hosts I want to ensure that only the telnet traffic between them must be dropped so between these two hosts telnet traffic should not go or FTP traffic should not go whatever the traffic you want to drop you can do that and all the remaining traffic will be permitted now uh, if you are if you want to test this is one of the basic scenario what I can do is I can simply create an ACL which is going to match my source that is 192.168.1.1 in my scenario and it's going to match the destination that is 192.168.1.2 here and then and it's also going to match the port number that is port number 23 by using an extended ACL so I'm going to create an ACL which is going to match these networks or match these packets and then I'll simply say drop and then after that I'll say all the remaining traffic has to be 
permitted and then I'm going to apply on the switch to so everything I'm going to do on the switch to on the switch to I'll apply for the VLAN 10 so which means any traffic entering on the VLAN 10 it will be matched with the respective VLAN access map and anything is matching with from 1.1 to 1.2 and if it is your tenant traffic it will be automatically dropped because we have a VLAN ACL applied something like this so these are the two different examples where we can not only use the VLAN ACLs to have uh, rules which defines who should communicate who should not communicate when we are doing some inter VLAN routing using NCVIs we can also specifically bind the MAC addresses by using MAC ACLs and also we can also ensure that if the traffic is going on the same VLAN still we can configure some VLAN ACL on our switch to ensure that from specific source to specific destination uh, we want some specific traffic to get dropped so there are some of the examples which will help you to understand where exactly the VLAN ACLs are applicable so when it comes to configuration here like here you can see VLAN ACL it's going to configure apply all the packets that are routed in and out, out of the VLAN that is inter VLAN or within the same VLAN ACLs now what I can do is I can apply a strict packet filtering which means I can define an action to drop the packets or I can define an action to forward the packets or even there is one more action what I can do is I can also redirect the traffic if it matches I'm not going to drop and I'm not going to forward but I'm going to redirect to some other specific interface so these are the different kind of actions we can take by matching a specific traffic and the VLAN ACLs are not defined by direction so when you apply it's going to apply for the complete VLAN so we don't we don't really apply ingress or outgress so it's going to apply for the complete VLAN now coming to the configurations VLAN configurations are more similar to your route map statements like if you try to see here I got one a sample configuration here where I got a VLAN access map so instead of saying route map we say VLAN access map and some name and then this is the sequence number of the map and then I'm going to match an ACL 101 so that 101 might be matching anything it depends like it can be a standard ACL it can be an extended ACL or it can be a MAC ACL so whatever you are applying so whatever matches it's going to ensure that it's going to drop the packets whatever matches that particular statement and all the remaining traffic will be forwarded now if you see here the VLAN access maps are similar to route maps and the way we write is almost similar to route maps we can take an action and we can take an action of drop or we can say forward or we can use redirect and then when we apply we are not going to apply on a specific interface we use VLAN filter command and then we'll, we are going to apply for a specific VLAN so when you say VLAN even you can define all when you define all it's going to apply for all the VLANs when you say VLAN 10 it's going to apply only for the VLAN 10 traffic so it's going to ensure that anything entering that particular VLAN 10 which is going to match this it's automatically going to drop that so probably in our next section probably we'll get into some basic labs where we'll try to verify some of the basic uh, VLAN configurations